focused on you. As we go on the air, we begin with developing news out of North St. Louis. A man is in the hospital after being shot by a police officer this afternoon. Thanks for being here at 4. I'm Kay Quinn. And I'm Brent Solomon. That shooting happened at the intersection of Dr. Martin Luther King and Bird Avenue shortly after noon. Following your sites, Mercedes McKay joins us live from police headquarters downtown with the new information she's learning. Mercedes. Brent and Kay, this actually all started from a St. Louis Police's mobile reserve unit patrolling a nearby neighborhood. So around 1145, a license plate reader went off detecting a stolen car. Now that led to suspects fleeing, causing an accident, and then shots going off. Here's what the scene looked like shortly after noon. You can see multiple police cars and some of the cars involved in the crash. Now this is how it all started. Police detected the stolen car, tried to pull it over, but it sped away. While officers were chasing the car, the car turned around into oncoming traffic, causing a crash with two other vehicles that were trying to avoid the stolen car. The passenger of the stolen car got out, tried to run away and then pointed a gun at one of the officers. The officer then fired at the suspect once, shooting him in the thigh. Uh, that suspect then was provided medical care right here on the scene. They put on a tourniquet, uh, got out their trauma kits, began working on them. They requested EMS. Uh, EMS responded and he was transported to a local hospital in a uh, uh, stable condition. The driver of the stolen vehicle actually never got out of his car and he is being treated at a hospital right now. Now, as for all of those other innocent drivers, they are all expected to be OK. But coming up at five, I'll go into how they handled this really scary situation they all got in the middle of. Live at police headquarters, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. All right, Mercedes, thanks. Also developing now, St. Louis police investigating a shooting on Hamilton Terrace in the city's Hamilton Heights neighborhood. Police say someone shot a man in the arm. That victim is believed to be in his 50s. He was not conscious or breathing. He was rushed to the hospital. We don't know what led up to that shooting. Five on your side will be sure to follow these developing stories for you. To get the latest information, download the Five on Your Side app by searching KSDK in the App Store. Right now, a strike looms for members of the United Auto Workers. The union plans to go on strike if new conditions aren't met by the time their contracts expire next week. The negotiations affect thousands of workers at the GM plant in Wentzville. Five on your side's Justina Coronel joins us live from the union hall with workers' demands. Justina? Yeah, okay, so in exactly one week, contract negotiations are up, and if there isn't a deal, there could be a strike as early as next Friday. Now, the United Auto Workers, known as UAW, is negotiating for a new labor contract with three big companies, including General Motors. In Wentzville, the General Motors assembly plant employs more than 4,000 hourly and salaried workers. Nationwide and locally, union workers want a 46% pay raise, a 32-hour work week with 40 hours of pay, and traditional pensions for new hires. Wentzville's mayor has been in his role since 2012, and he remembers the union strike four years ago, and he knows how impactful it can be. Uh, so we'll have a domino effect, not only with those folks, uh, uh, but also local businesses, because, you know, they eat, they live, they work, they build, buy houses here, they uh, shop in our local stores, so we'll have a big economic impact if there is a strike. Now, earlier today, we did learn General Motors did make an offer to the union, so we'll see what happens next. As far as what's next this weekend, there's actually a rally happening here at the Union Hall, and I'm, I hear that they're rallying for a strong contract. Reporting in Wentzville, Justina Cornell, five on your side. Well, we now know the names of the three teenagers who died in a car crash yesterday in University City. Dion Robinson, Johnny Ursery, and Demetrius Ingram were all 15 years old. The teens were from the Olivet area and attended Ledoux Horton Watkins High School. According to the crash report, Ursery was driving Robinson's mother's car when he failed to make a left turn after driving too fast. St. Louis Alder woman Sharon Tyus owns the vacant home that they crashed into. She says it's not the first time drivers have had problems with that left curve. You can't bring the families back, uh, the boys back, but I, I am a city elected official. I actually sponsored the ordinance for speed humps. And I don't know that uh, U City does speed humps, but they need to do something about this, this curve right here. It's been more than one accident here. Well, fund me in place to help pay for Dion Robinson's funeral arrangements. So far, it's raised over $1,000.
Just hours ago, several mental health experts met at Harris Stowe State University in St. Louis to discuss suicide prevention and the 988 crisis helpline. The helpline has been active in Missouri for a year now. Mental health experts discuss the challenges facing young people. Missouri Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe was there. Kehoe says it's likely that everyone has been impacted by mental health problems in one way or another. But there's always people out there looking for somebody they can talk to, looking for that help, looking for somebody that tells them they love them and care about them. Um, and 988 has made such a difference. And so from a personal level, we are very, we are very appreciative as well. According to Kehoe, over $30 million has been put into the program so far. Seven centers across the state have answered nearly 51,000 calls since it began. Today, Congresswoman Cori Bush announcing a permanent home for the Congress in Your Neighborhood program. A neighborhood service center will be established at the St. Louis County Library. That's the Natural Bridge Branch. The program began back in 2021 to connect local people with the federal government. Accessibility is key to public service. And I know that all the people who are up here with me right now can attest to that. That's the difference between doing the work and doing the most for our community. And we understand that not everyone will come to the office. So being located in a place where the people already are alleviates a lot of the stress. The program is able to provide members of the community with tax resources, passports, small business grants, and a whole lot more. Hunter Biden braces for a new set of charges. The deadline the special counsel has given itself to put the case before a grand jury. And he went 3,000 feet into a cave and fell seriously ill. The latest on the effort to rescue an American in Turkey. You know, if you visit our area caves, you'll find temperatures that are around 60 degrees. And that's what we'll find tomorrow morning walking out the doors as comfortable weather continues. What it looks like for your upcoming weekend plans in just a few minutes.